us this morning. Um, we realise that we're trying some new technology uh, today and so if it's a bit glitchy at the beginning don't worry because we've pre-recorded uh, some beautiful worship that Jordan's going to lead us in and we're going to be hearing uh, a message that I prepared from John chapter 17 but I don't know about you guys but uh, I'm missing being Together. 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 Yeah. We're, be, we're missing being together. And so we've invited some friends from Holy Trinity. So we're saying good morning to Joe. Morning, everyone. And to uh, Angie. Good morning, everybody. And to the, the Dorwoods, David and Sonia and Alan and Anna. It is so lovely to have you uh, with us and to be together. Uh, there's a, a song that we sometimes sing at Holy Trinity, Break Dividing Walls. And it says in it, you have called us to be a body. You have called us as friends joined together in the bond of the spirit until the end. And there's a prayer right at the heart of that song that we're going to make our prayer this morning. And so why don't we just lift up our hands in prayer as the Bible says. And we're going to say this prayer. Father, we join in the prayer of Jesus. As you are, let us be one. Join together in unity and purpose. All for the love of your son. Amen. We realise you want to hear about some of the things that are going on at Holy Trinity and some of the testimonies of God's uh, provision and providence in our lives. So I'm going to go over to Joe. Joe, how's your week been so far? Oh, well, we have been making the most of this week. The children have been designing progressively more dangerous games to make me squeal. So we started off with a little bit of trampoline dodgeball, only two headfirst dives off the edge. Um, we then progressed to radio horse, which is a game where Aaron takes on the role of rodeo horse and tries to throw the children off of his back. <laughs> and our, our, our sort of our climax of like peak dangerous, make Joe panic, we're gonna have to go to the hospital game was the game Lunge Cannon, which involves holding the children in the air over your head on the swing, letting it go, and then them jumping across the lounge and landing head first in a pile of cushions or a bookcase, depending on how you aim. So that is what we have been doing this week. Wonderful. So just like us, you had to have lost your minds. <laughs> uh, well, it's all relative in our house, to be fair. <laughs> Joe, why don't you tell us uh, something, uh, a way that... Uh, we can just bring God right into the heart of our lives at a time like this. Well, one thing that I'm sure many of you will have seen across the internet is the fact that lots of people have been putting rainbows in their windows as a sign of hope, as a sign of good things to come, and as a sign that we're all in it together. And um, the interesting thing is just wondering how many people really know what the rainbow means, where that's come from, the fact that it was given to us as a gift from God, a sign of his covenant between God and all living creatures is what it says in Genesis. And earlier on in the week when we were just needing to get out the house for our daily Boris, as they call it, our wee one um, exercise, we went for a wee walk around the neighbourhood to try and find as many rainbows as we could. It only descended into bickering five minutes in, so I thought we were doing pretty well, but um, I think we spotted 13 rainbows out on our walk and we've got a big one up in our window. And rainbows, as you'll know, come from the story of Noah. And who knows, who knew better than many of us what it meant to be locked down, to be in somewhere. Um, I think if you were taking part in a sort of Sunday school quiz, but how long was no one locked down in the ark with those animals? A lot of people would say, oh, 40 days and 40 nights. But if you read through that chapter of Genesis, actually, it's a lot longer. And it goes on, it says there's one week in the ark before the rain and then 40 days and then waiting 150 days. And it goes on and on and then summarizes at the end of the chapter. They were in there for 10 and a half months and then another Two, month, eh, two months after that. So he knew what it was like to be in a small space with wild animals, just like my children. Um, and for him, when he came out of that ark, out of that place of being stuck, the rainbow was a sign, a promise that that wouldn't happen 
again. And of course, we're not in a flood situation just now, but we are in a different situation where we're having to stay put and we're having to trust. And if you read through your Bible at other promises God has made, there's plenty of other promises that can relate to where we are at the moment. And specifically, if you look at Isaiah chapter 54, it goes back to this promise that God made to Noah when he was on the ark. And then um, Isaiah is prophesying about what is going to happen with the chosen Messiah. And it says in verse eight, in a surge of anger, I hid my face from you for a moment, but with everlasting kindness, I will have compassion on you. Because of what Jesus did at Easter, God is going to have everlasting compassion on us. And verse nine goes on to say, for to me, this is like the days of Noah, when I swore that the waters of Noah would never again cover the earth, so I have sworn that I would not be angry with you or rebuke you. That rainbow promise is for us right now. Because of what Jesus has done, he has sworn that he is with us. So if you are thinking about rainbows this week, what can you do? Um, I owe a debt of gratitude to Laura Brown, as I always do for this. Uh, she sent me um, a prayer that Messy Church have written so that every time you see a rainbow over the next few weeks, you can say a little prayer and each colour um, represents a different prayer you can make. So um, if there are any children who are watching this this morning, and I hope there are, I can see you, Finlay and Julia and Anna and Callum on my screen right now. One thing you might want to challenge yourselves with is before you do that prayer, run around the house and find something in each colour. Now, I didn't want to take our rainbow off our window. I want to keep it up as a sign of hope. So I played the game with Finlay and Finlay came up with something for each colour as I pray this prayer. But because it's Finley, every single one of them's a dinosaur. So we are going to pray through a rainbow of dinosaurs this morning. And hopefully this is a prayer you can do at home. So red, red on the rainbow is a sign of love, a red heart. And we can pray and thank God for the love that he has for us. Orange on a traffic light, or indeed on the Spinosaurus, is a sign of waiting. And we need to pray to God for patience as we wait for an answer to all that is going on. And we thank uh, God for people um, like David and many other scientists who are involved in finding answers. Yellow, like my Therizinosaurus. Um, yellow, um, sometimes people use yellow as a colour to represent fear. And if you're feeling scared, we need to pray for God's peace that passes all understanding. Pray for many people who are feeling scared this week. Green is the colour on a first aid sign. So let's pray for all those who aren't well. Pray for those who are in hospital, who are uh, seeking treatment. Pray for those who are treating, at, being treated at home. And just pray that they will find healing. Pray for healing for many, not just in Scotland, but around the world who are ill at the moment. Blue, like my Styracosaurus, it's the colour of the NHS badge. And we want to pray for the caregivers in our society. We want to pray for doctors, for nurses, for uh, medical assistants, for cleaners. We want to pray for uh, social workers. We want to pray for the police. All those many, many people who are out there serving our nation just now, putting themselves at risk so that others can be okay purple, my purple stegosaurus here, purple is the colour of royalty and though everything may feel out of control, God is sovereign, he is king and we thank him um, for being who he is, we pray your kingdom come Jesus. And pink here, my final dinosaur. Pink is the colour of hope, like you would see in a sunrise or a sunset. And we have hope because God has promised that he will be with us until the end. So I hope this week, as you see your rainbows, that you will pray through them for all these things and thank God for a, being a promise keeper who never, ever breaks his promises. Amen. Brilliant. That is a wonderful message, Joe.
And uh, I think it'll just be an easy way for us to pray as we remember the rainbows. We're seeing so many in our community here up in the windows, and it's wonderful that we can reclaim the rainbow. Uh, we've been uh, had many prayer meetings this week through th this kind of format through Zoom, and uh, it was great on Wednesday. Uh, to have nearly 40 of us from Holy Trinity praying together. I was also praying with some pastors this week and they use that very, uh, ver those very verses in Isaiah 54, just to talk about the promise of God because of what Jesus has done in Isaiah 53, the suffering servant. So these are promises that are over our life right now. So thank you for sharing that with us. Angie, we see you're, you've got an interesting background there. Tell us what's happened. Yes, as you see, I'm live from Holy Trinity. This was very unexpected this morning. I have spent a lot of time in Holy Trinity alone this week, which is very sad. I'm missing all of you and all the people who drop in and who work here. But I had to leave very early this morning to get here as there was a power cut in West Lothian. So there are probably some of people at home like Maureen and David and maybe some others who can't connect to the internet right now. So I thought it was safer to get here just in case the electricity didn't come back on. If uh, somebody can't uh, connect this morning, they'll be able to do so at 12 o'clock today and we will, we will send out some pre-recorded material so that people can still watch it. Now, God is uh, he's a generous God and he has been uh, answering our prayers this week. Just uh, share with us a little bit about how God's been answering the prayers with Food Bank this week. Well, as you know, there were huge supermarket shortages which affected us. People stockpiling meant that we couldn't get food, we couldn't get bread, we couldn't get pasta, we couldn't get long life milk. And that's still a wee bit of a problem, but I think it will be resolved soon. And we wondered what we were going to do. As you know, we see about 45 people to 50 every week and the shelves were clearing. So there was a lot of prayer went up, Lord, you are the God who provides. And it's quite incredible how he has provided through some of the agencies in Western Hills, lots of individuals in different communities, people who support Food Bank, and food has just come in, in absolute abundance. We have the fullest cupboards we've ever had. And then we had the problem of how do we actually get it to people? We thought we had a solution on Tuesday, and on Monday night, the criteria changed again about social uh, distancing and so on, which meant we could not do food bank the way we normally do it. So we had probably 10 or 12 of the most needy and bags were delivered to them. And I've now put in a system, an appointment system where people have been sent out a card to come and access Holy Trinity at a specific hour. And we'll put their food ready for them and they know who it is who's coming to collect it. If this works, then next week, we will be able to feed 38 children in the families that were, are being allocated and 40 adults. So that feels reassuring. With time, next week, we should be able to expand it even more and hopefully reach more and more people. The different agencies have our number. We know that we are the only food bank at the moment who are up and running. So I think we'll probably get a lot of referrals, which is exactly what we want. We want to help as many people as we possibly can in the community and the families who are struggling to feed their children and who struggled even before this happened. So God is good. Just pray that we will have opportunities that we'll hear about the people who are in real need and we'll be able to reach them. We've had a lot of the team who've been able to come in, get bags, deliver them to people and lots of very, very grateful people that are receiving food. And that applies to the congregation. If you find yourself short, don't hesitate to get in touch. Phone the office, one of the ministry team, and we'll get food to you. Well, why don't you? These are wonderful stories, Angie, and it was just amazing just delivering to people's homes. But it's great that God's given us creative solutions to be able to have an appointment system and people to get real help because we believe in a real God who wants to help real people. Why don't you just lead us in a prayer that will just pray just for the most vulnerable in our community at this okay. time? Lord, we thank you that you are the provider. And despite shortages, you have provided abundantly. Lord, we ask you that you would highlight to us, you would give us discernment, you would give us information so that we might reach the most vulnerable in this community. 
We pray, Lord, your blessing on people as they spend time at home. We pray that none in this community would go hungry. Lord, we've prayed that for many years, but we're praying it, we're crying out to you now. But if people are hungry, Lord, that we would know about it, that we might be able to deliver food to them. And we thank you again, Lord, for the wonderful abundance that you are Jehovah Jireh, the Lord who provides, and you provide in abundance that no one would be short and no one would be hungry. We thank you for your heart for this community, for the, the people of Wester Hills, that you love them and you care for them. You want to provide for them. And we thank you that you've given us your heart, that we love this community so much and we want to bless them and help in any way that we can, Lord. So open doors, give us ears to hear, and may we reach all the needy people who have no food at this moment. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thanks, Angie. We're going over to the Dawood household. This is uh, uh, Dr. David Dawood and uh, Dr. Sonia Dawood. Uh, to give them their titles, their elders at Holy Trinity. And we're so glad you could uh, join us today. I've got mixed emotions because today was going to be a day where we were going to be uh, celebrating your time with us uh, so far because you guys were heading off to uh, Malawi. But things have changed. So why don't you just tell us a little bit about what has been happening due to coronavirus? Yeah, so, so life has sort of had a bit of a up and down over the last few weeks. Um, we were obviously meant to be leaving um, next weekend to head south to then fly out to Malawi. But obviously, as the situation's changed in the UK and around the world, that's became very clear that it wasn't going to be possible. So about now, about a week and a half ago, we made the decision that we weren't going to go um, and that we would need to stay here. There's been a number of logistical challenges in that. Uh, one, I didn't have a job. Um, because my contract was finishing or I'd handed in my notice to finish on a week past Friday um, and also we were meant to be moving, moving out our house um, and we'd rented out to some other folk who were meant to be moving in. Um, so there was quite a few things that we had to face and work through um, but it's been amazing to see how, how God has worked through that. So fantastically the letting agents who were letting out the house that the people who were going to be moving out from and into here um, found somewhere else for the new family to move into so that they so the folk who are going to move into here are now be able to stay in their house so we can stay in our house so we have a house so that's excellent thank god um, and then also um there has been an opportunity open up for me to um help lead a, a coronavirus research project and um, so i suppose a lot of my medical training and science training over the last 10 to 15 years has actually actually really neatly slots into um, a, a fairly exciting project or, or challenging project um, that, is, that is taking place. It's been incredible to see how that has grown over the last week or so. We've um, got very, very high level support um, for it from within government. Um, and there's lots of doors have opened up in ways that normally in the normal circumstances wouldn't happen. Um, there's still a huge amount to do to deliver it and your prayers for it would be massively appreciated. There's, it's coordinating probably a group of about 30, 30 to 40 people um, to try and deliver something that, that, is, that, is, that is very challenging. Uh, so, so your prayers for that would be, would be massively valued. That is absolutely incredible and it's wonderful to hear about that and we will commit to pray for that. One of the things that was amazing to see uh, was out in the streets, um, people uh, in their masses just clapping the NHS at this time and uh, it was really quite moving uh, just to see that, that support. Um, but we realise that uh, we can pray in the midst of these situations. Are there specific things that uh, we can be informed about that we can pray for at this time? Yeah, absolutely. I think I think probably there's there's a number of, of really important things to pray for. I think the first is actually is to pray for peace. Um, it's a it's a it's a it's a fairly uncertain time for everybody um, and for people who are working in the hospitals in particular, because obviously they're looking after people who are sick, some with coronavirus and some without with, with who do not have coronavirus but are still sick. Um, it's also uncertain because there's uncertainties about how best to look after them. Uh, there's uncertainties about the best ways to treat um, people who are very sick with coronavirus. Um, and then there's also challenges in just working in a stressful environment. But also all of that in the context of the fact that actually um, that, that, that people who are working in NHS are, are, are mothers, their fathers, their, their parents. And so actually it's the whole family network and everything that's in that too. So I think praying for peace for 
the people on the front line, for the managers, um, and for the people who are actually at high level in government to make right decisions and right choices about how best to care for um, individuals, but also to care for us as a nation. Thanks, David and Sonia, and uh, thanks, guys, for joining us this morning. I'm going to say uh, a prayer. And uh, so let's just bow our heads if you're at home. This is an opportunity just to pray. Lord, we just want to say thank you for those who uh, are making great sacrifices at this time, whether by being at home and keeping others safe or whether working on the front line in the NHS, maybe in our hospitals right now. We know we've got many in our congregation who are doing just that. And we pray that your hand would be upon them, that you would protect their hearts and their minds in Christ Jesus. Lord, they'll be seeing things and making decisions that uh, none of us would want to have to make. We pray that you would give them great wisdom and courage. We pray, Lord, that you would protect our health service, Lord, from becoming overwhelmed and you would stay the hand of this virus, Lord, from it completely overwhelming us. We thank you, Lord, for the good care that we have and for those dedicated doctors like David and Sonia uh, who have served us over the years and kept us healthy. And we thank you, Lord, for the gifts and talents that you've given and the particular gifts and talents you've given to David in setting up this uh, research team. Lord, we pray that um, a vaccine would be found very, very soon and you would work miracles in the midst of that. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to be informed and help us, Lord, to keep faithful in prayer because we know prayer changes things. And so, Lord, hear our prayer, bless your people and bless those who are serving us on the front line right now in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. We're going to turn to the scriptures now and Colleen is going to read to us from John chapter 17. Great. If you have your Bibles, you can join with me. Uh, John 17. After Jesus said this, he looked to forward to heaven and prayed. Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son that your son may glorify you. For you granted him authority over all people that he might give eternal life to all those you have given him. Now this is eternal life, that they know you, the one true God, and Jesus Christ whom you've sent. I have brought you glory on earth by finishing the work you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. I have revealed to those whom you have given me out of the world. They were yours and you gave them to me, and they obeyed your word. Now they know that everything you have given me comes from you. For I have given them the words you gave me, and they accepted them. They knew with certainty that I came from you, and they believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those you've given me, for they are yours. All I have is you, and all you have is mine, and glory has come to me through them. I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them and kept them safe by that name you gave me. None has been lost except the one doomed to destruction so that scripture would be fulfilled. I am coming to you now, but I say these things while I am still in the world, so that they may have full measure of my joy within them. I have given them your word and the world has hated them for they are not of the world any more than I am of the world. My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. They are not of it, even as I'm not of it. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. For I, for them, I sanctify myself that they too may be truly sanctified. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one, Father, just as you in me and I am in you. May they also be in us that the world may believe that you sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. I and them and you and, and me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I want those 
you have given me to be with me where I am and to see my glory, the glory you have given me because you love me before the creation of the world. Righteous Father, though the world does not know you, I know you and they know that you have sent me. I have made you known to them and will continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me may be in them and that I myself may be in them. Thank you, Lord, for this. Thank you. We're going to worship God and Jordan Lang is going to lead us. So just where you are in your home, just lift up a song of praise to God. Don't worry if you're not a good singer. The Lord loves the heart as we cry out to him. And here's a song, Is He Worthy, that really helps us to express some of the feelings we have at this time. Welcome to Holy Trinity Online. We're so glad that you have tuned in. We're here to hear God's word and to sing his praises. If you're not tuning in live, then make sure you uh, look up Holy Trinity All Age chat uh, from this morning. You'll we're there, not, we're you'll not hear lots speak of stories and testimonies of what God is doing Can in the midst of time. Let's worship God. Let's sing to his praise. Jordan Lang is going to lead us in a wonderful song of praise. Is he worthy? Yes. Yes.
So glad you could join us for this morning's message. We're in John's Gospel of Joy, chapter 17. You might want to take a moment to have a Bible open right there before you. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you that you reveal to us precious truths through your word. The truth about us and the truth about you and the truth about us and you together. For your desire is that we become one with you as we'll learn today. We pray that the speaker would decrease now, so that Jesus Christ of Nazareth would increase. For we ask it in his holy name. Amen. When we love our neighbour, we are like the good Samaritan. When we share the gospel, we are like the disciples. But when we pray for others, we are like Jesus. Jesus Christ, our Saviour and our Lord. Jesus lives to make intercession for us. The ministry of Jesus right now is to pray for you and for me. Jesus, who died on that cross and rose again and ascended to the right hand of the Father, that place traditionally given to a firstborn son, a place of authority. And what is he doing there? The Bible tells us Jesus is praying for us. He's praying for you and he's praying for for me. The book of Hebrews puts it like this, that Jesus is able to save completely those who come to God through him, because he lives to make intercession for us. I remember being told that for the first time as a teenager, being told that Jesus was praying for me. I was blown away. I could scarcely Believe it. It is, in fact, something that could only be received or believed in faith. And yet it must be true because Jesus drew me to him, caused me to believe and receive him. And I became was given the right to be known as a child of God. If you have believed and received Jesus, be assured that Jesus must have been praying for you. And even more so, he's praying for you right now. Now, Jesus lives to make intercession for us. I was on a trip to the United States and when we got off the plane, the uh, car rental desks were being refurbished and so we had to get on a, a bus along with many people who were on our flight. We waited for ages before a bus came along, but when the bus came along, the, a very elderly driver got off. But he was the most friendly, helpful, welcoming man I've ever met. He helped everyone with their bags, got everyone a seat. He asked everyone just questions. He had jokes as we were driving on the short journey. He had us all rolling around laughing. And as I got off that bus, I just said, sir, I was fitting in America, sir, I've never met anyone who is so enthusiastic about their job. And he just looked at me and said, son, I live for this. I wonder what you would say you're living for. A time of 
isolation right now because of coronavirus maybe exposes a bit of what we're living for. Some of the idols in our, in our society, in our world, are coming down right now before our very eyes. Things that we were relied upon, maybe things that we're, we're struggling to do without. And it's exposing where our treasure really lies, where our heart is. But we know what Jesus is living for. Jesus lives to make intercession for us, for his people. He's living to pray for us. It's an unusual time right now for all of us, for many of us. I've had calls this week, people desperate to just do something to help out. People calling me to say, can I just do something around the church? I'm, I'm going stir crazy inside the house. Well, let me just say one thing that you can do. Every single one of us, you can pray. Prayer is not an alternative to work. Prayer is the work. There is a very famous writer called Oswald Chambers. Many of you would have read his devotional, My Utmost for His Highest. He would often say that a Christian's business should really be the work of intercessory prayer. He says in his book, he says, prayer does not prepare us for a greater work. Prayer is the greater work. And yet, sometimes it seems that our prayers, my prayers, seem so weak and helpless in the face of a huge pandemic that is sweeping across our nation and across our world. My prayers feel so feeble when I see that the issues that are all around us when world leaders and church leaders call for a day of prayer, it's so easy for people to mock them and to, to laugh that we would think that prayer could do anything. And yet, the Bible is abundantly clear. The Bible says that when we pray, mountains are moved. One of the promises of Scripture that's very close to our hearts at Holy Trinity is the promise of Second Chronicles 7.14. You, you maybe know it. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. I wonder if you believe a verse of Scripture like that that we could pray and mighty things could happen, mighty healings, the whole course of human history changing because of prayer. Those of you who went to clan gathering in the past uh, may remember Jack Deere coming to speak to us and he told uh, a story about a church in Texas Next door to the church was a bar and the, the bar owner had applied to extend the bar into a huge venue. And the church wasn't happy about this, as you can imagine. And so they began to uh, campaign and leaflet and they began to call prayer meetings together against planning permission being uh, uh, granted. But despite all this, planning permission was granted. But about a week before the new bar was due to open, a bolt of lightning struck the bar and burnt it to the ground. The church was rejoicing. God had answered their prayers. They'd been vindicated. But they changed their tune when they found out that the publican was going to sue the church for the damage done to his livelihood, whether through direct or indirect means. And as soon as he took them to court, the church denied any culpability, any responsibility for what had happened to his bar. It made its way all the way to a local court and uh, the, the, the local uh, judge or sheriff, he had a look at the brief and as he looked at it, he said, this is the most unusual case. It seems to me that we have a publican who believes in the power of prayer and a church that doesn't. To be clear, Christians do not believe in the power of prayer. We believe 
in a God who answers prayer. The power of prayer, or lack of it thereof, is wholly contingent on who we are praying to. Who is it that when we pray for others, who are we praying to? Well, in John chapter 17, we get the inside track. We we get to overhear the prayer of Jesus, the intercessory prayer life of Jesus while he was on earth, before he went to the cross. And here we find Jesus praying for the disciples and praying for all those who would believe in him because of the disciples' message. Just think about that. That includes you because you have believed. And what do we find Jesus doing? Verse 1, after Jesus said this, he looked towards heaven and prayed, Father, The hour has come. Abba is the word. Abba, the hour has come. Jesus had taught his disciples, hadn't he? He taught them to pray like this, our Father who art in heaven. And just as Jesus had taught them how to pray, so Jesus prayed in just the same way. We would do well to do exactly the same, to address God as Father, Abba. There's a wonderful intimacy in being able to call God Daddy. I was hearing a message that the leader of the Roman Catholic Church, the Pope, gave to the residents live in Italy last weekend. Many of them are suffering greatly uh, through the coronavirus. Many are are dying. He gave a message of, of hope. But he said in answer to the question he was hearing, when people were saying, we, we, can't, we can't get to a priest, we can't get to a church, where are we going to turn to? He said to them, and I suppose millions around the world have heard the message, go directly to your daddy. Return to your daddy. Return to the father. He's waiting with open arms. That is such a true message. God is waiting for you and waiting for me. He's waiting with open arms and we can go directly to the Father. Do you remember what I told you uh, Tim Keller was saying about uh, being able to go to God? He said only a son or a daughter would dare to go to an important king in the middle of of the night because they were a bit scared. I know there's some people who are feeling scared Somebody said to me this week that they were, they were freaking out. You don't need to be scared. You don't need to be on your own. You've got someone you can go to. You can go to Abba, Father, Daddy God. He's waiting to hear your prayer. But Jesus doesn't just pray to the Father, Abba. He also prays, Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name. The name you gave me so that they may be one as we are one. God is the Holy Father. It's not just about intimacy, Daddy God. He's also a holy God. He's someone who, if it wasn't for that righteousness that comes through faith in Jesus Christ, I would be utterly consumed, totally destroyed and crushed, undone in his presence. But because we have believed in Jesus, because we put our faith in him, we can come into the presence of this holy God. And Jesus is praying, Holy Father. He's praying for unity praying that you and I may be one, even though we're separated right now by by social uh, distancing. We're, We're separated physically, but Jesus is praying that we might be one, and one in spirit. And one of the most wonderful ways we can do that is as we pray. Holy Father, protect them. Jesus is going to be with his Father in heaven, 
And in this moment, he, ta- he takes this moment of prayer, of intercessory prayer, to commit these disciples whom he has walked with for three years, whom he has loved with, with this amazing love. And they can feel that love. They've experienced that love. And they love him too. And he's loved them. And now he's going to have to leave them. And what does he do? He leaves them in the care of his father. That is something that each of us would do well to learn to do. That though we're separated physically, some from brothers and sisters, some from our children, maybe from a mother, a father, maybe you're feeling that distant, maybe from a best friend, do you know you can commit them into your father's hands? You can commit them to his care in the place of prayer. That's what Jesus was doing. Protect them, Lord. I'm giving them over to your care when I'm no longer here physically. The great theologian Karl Barth, he wrote about this and often writes very eloquently. He said, to successive generations of believers, this prayer communicates the theological vision that lies at the heart of faith. Jesus hands those whom he loves back to God and is bold enough to hold God to God's promises for this community. It's just a fancy way of saying that though we're physically separated, we can commit people into God's hands. When we feel helpless, as someone was saying to me this, this week and saying that they, they have a friend whose wife is, is in a very serious condition because of coronavirus, and he feels so helpless. This is what we can do in the midst of that. Maybe you'll be in a situation like this over the coming weeks. We bring them into God's hands. We do exactly what Jesus had to do before he faced the cross. What a privilege we have. We can go boldly. We can go boldly with our friends, with our families, into God's presence and offer them to him. But he's not only Abba, Father, He's not only the Holy Father, but he's also the Righteous Father. Our former minister, Kenny Borthwick, he often quoted this very verse of Scripture. He told us to remember that he is the Righteous Father. He was warning us not to become like some of the world can be today, all pally-pally with God. Me and God, we're great mates. That though God loves us with the same love that he has for his son, Jesus, he is the righteous father. He's to be respected. He's to be obeyed. Righteous father, says Jesus. Though the world does not know you, I know you. And they know you have sent me. I have made you known to them. And will continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me may be in them and that I myself may be in them. This is a prayer that uh, we can all join in. That we want to pray for others. One of our desires at this time is that God would make himself known to people. In a world where we've been so busy and people have been able to rush around and just shove God out of their lives, suddenly they're being forced to stop, confined to their own homes. Many are asking questions. What is the purpose of life? What am I doing here? Why aren't the things that I I trusted in and brought me comfort, why are they not bringing me comfort right now? Jesus is praying right now that the Father would make himself known to them. Jesus came to reveal the Father to us. And we're praying the same, aren't we? We're praying for family that maybe we've been praying for years and it feels like like that prayer has never been answered. But I believe a time has come. A time has come when God is going to wake spiritually dead people that you've been praying for, that I've been praying for, that have been, been praying, people have been praying for them down through the decades. And God's going to bring them spiritually to life. We get to join in that that prayer of the Father that he would show himself to them. 
Just as you have believed the message that God loved the world so much that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. So we want our friends and our family to know that eternal life that is more than this world. We're not just living for now, but we're living for a, for a new heaven and a new earth. Jesus gives us, actually, in these precious verses, he gives us a new definition of eternal life. Listen to it. Now, this is eternal life. That they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. What an amazing thing to say. Perhaps up to then, those disciples, even us, were we think of eternal life in terms of quantity, life that goes on and on and on forever. But Jesus speaks about eternal life here in terms of quality, that we may know the Father and that we may know Jesus, whom the Father has sent. God wants you to know him in a really special way at this time. And he wants you to join in the ministry of intercessory prayer for those that don't know him yet. I think there's hardly a person who I've ever met and who's shared their testimony with me, who didn't tell me about someone who was praying for them before they came to know Jesus Christ. They may have not even known it at the time, but sometimes even years later they discover somebody in their family or a friend or someone, a teacher at school, was praying for them. You get to be part of that kind of ministry, that people may have eternal life, that they may know the Father and the one whom he sent, even Jesus Christ. I want you to join in that ministry. And so I declare in Jesus' name, I declare holy ground over your home. You might be stuck at home, but holy ground in your kitchen, in your bedroom, in your living room, that you can take off your shoes and you can cry out to God in intercessory prayer and you can pray for others and God will hear those prayers. He loves to do that. Jesus lives to make intercession for us. He's praying for you right now. And we get to partner in this, in the very ministry of Jesus. What a privilege that we have. What a hope that we have. The very hope of eternal life, that we might know God and know Jesus, whom the Father has sent. Our hope and prayer at Holy Trinity is that you've heard God speak to you today. This is a time of waiting upon the Lord. It's not easy waiting to see God act, and yet there are wonderful promises. Those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall rise up on wings like eagles. They shall run and not grow weary. They shall walk and not grow faint. We're going to sing to God's praise, a wonderful hymn of praise. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. As we wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord our God. We will reign forever. Our hope, our strong deliverer. You are the
Thanks for joining us today. May God bless you. May you keep safe and well and in his will. And now, may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, rest and remain with you and all whom you love and cherish and all God's people here and everywhere, both now and forevermore. Amen.